In my last video, I restored the Zinger sewing machine table. Now I want to make a tabletop for it. I want to make something really special, but I only have this piece of junk timber. So I'm gonna need to put in a lot of elbow grease to get this table looking awesome. Now the first order of business is to correct this crooked shape. I mean, the whole board is really, really crooked. I don't have a jointer, I don't have a planer, but what I do have is a router. So it's time for a clever solution. But first, I need to cut this plank to length. I want my table to be about 80 centimeters long. So I'm leaving an extra 10 centimeters of slack on each edge. I'm using a circular saw to cut this piece Absolutely not precisely, but that's alright, since in the end I can come back and fix any mistake that I make. They say that a woodworker's skills are measured in his skills of making jigs. So, I'm going to be making a jig that can level this piece of really, really curved timber. I have a pretty flat plywood table and I'm going to be fixing these two aluminum extrusions to it they will provide a reference surface that is really, really flat. I'm placing my plank in between these two aluminum extrusions and then securing it from the side with some bolts. As you can see, I have my work cut out for myself. So, this is gonna be a serious challenge. Here you can see me setting the depth of my plunge router and this is critical to set it as low as it can go, so to find the lowest spot of the wood, and then only take away as much material as you need to correct the twist. I've made this jig in a previous video, and it worked on smaller pieces, but I've never tried it on such a large piece of timber. I made a small test section, and it turned out great, so now I need to cut only a bit more. Yeah, right, I'm not even gonna tell you how long this took. But I enjoyed the work. All day long I'm sitting in front of a computer, so it's nice to get out and do something in the workshop. Even if it's not the most efficient solution, it works for me. Feel free to let me know if I'm dumb. That's one half of one side milled. Now for the other half. That was fast. Okay, now I need to clean up the top and the bottom of the plank. As you can see, I'm wearing a dust mask, eye protection and also hearing protection. It's really important when you're doing something really long like this that you wear some really good hearing protection because you can go deaf in a matter of months of working on these projects. Now that's one side done. But there's still a bit of cleanup needed as I couldn't route to the very edge of the wood because I would have hit the aluminum and that could be some serious trouble for me. So I'm just gonna go in with a chisel and clean up all the edges. This is one of the most satisfying parts of this project. It was so nice to get a piece of wood this flat. Even though the wood is flat, I still have some minor pieces of tear out so this will still need to be sanded down really, really well. That's one side of my plank done. Here you can see the minimum thickness of the wood. This will be the thickness of the whole table, 18 millimeters. That's just all right. So I finished the milling process and now I have a flat piece of wood. And the next step is to sand it smooth and finish it. I've not yet decided on what type of finish I wanna use. But what's for sure is that I need to sand it down first. So I've bought a bunch of sandpaper and I'm gonna go to town with my hand sander. This is the first round of sanding and I'm only gonna go down to about 100 or 120 grit and then in the final finishing process I'm gonna sand this table up to 1200 grit. Thankfully, I didn't make that many mistakes during the routing process, so it went pretty smoothly. But here you can see, next to my clamp, there is one small piece of tear out, and that will need to be fixed later with some epoxy and some sawdust. So, that's the sanding done. I've checked over my work and have noticed only one mistake. Or make that two. 
this part of the wood is kind of rotted away and is way lower than all other sections. So that's why my router didn't touch it. Thank God I have some slack. All right, so I finished up the wood on both sides and I think that the grain looks amazing. The next step is to cut it down to length. For that, I'm gonna use my circular saw. I'm gonna make sure to cut out this small rotted section from the top and that means that I only lose about 10 centimeters of wood. So that's okay. This time I'm way more precise. I drew two guidelines for my circular saw and I'm also going to be sanding down both edges to make them as flat as possible. Okay, cutting to length is done. Now I want to fix up the edges to make a live edge table. You know, when you're so attached to a project, you start thinking about ways to make it look better, feel better, or have a generally a nicer atmosphere. And that's why I came up with the decision on the fly to make this a live edge table. And that would have been a useful piece of information before I had screwed very many screws into the side in the routing process. But now it's time to fix them all. Next time I'm definitely going to spend more time in the planning phase and decide what I want in the beginning and not just make up decisions on the fly. So here you can see me mixing up some really thick wood glue with some sawdust and I'm going to use this paste to fill in every single little hole that is on the wood. And this took ages. This paste worked beautifully. I managed to fill every single screw hole without too much trouble. And it dried pretty quickly so I could sand it down pretty fast after applying it. Unfortunately, it changed the color of the wood a bit, so it has made it a bit brighter and a bit whitish, and I really don't like that. If there are very many holes that I need to fill, then I need to come up with a different solution. I want to keep the form of the live edge, but maybe the color will have to go. So I have half a mind of painting the whole thing black. It would have been nice to plan ahead and know beforehand that I was going to be making a live edge table, but since I decided this on the fly, I had to manage all these little mistakes. Okay, now that's done, I want to show you something really, really cool. I know of this technique that is used to harden softwoods. At least, I know of one way to do it, but I'm gonna try the budget option. I'm going to be burning the wood and for that they usually use roofing torches. I don't have a roofing torch and I don't have a propane canister to use it. So I have this small propane burner. I'm going to use this. The difficult part with this is that I cannot see what I'm doing so it's pretty much just guesswork. I'm burning a section then looking at it then burning another section then looking at it and it took a bunch of time but Eventually, I started to see some progress. At first, I was kind of placing it onto the burner and this left a spotty finish. So that's probably going to be the underside of my table. But on the other side, I managed to do a pretty great job. This is the top of the table. And as you can see, for some reason, it has not burned one small part of the wood. I don't know why this is. If you have any idea why the flame hasn't charred the wood in just this one line, then please let me know, I'm really interested. Anyways, now it's time for the sanding process. I have a bunch of sandpaper and now it's time to go to work. I'm going to be working my way up all the way from 80 grit to 400 grit and then finally to 1200 grit. I'm gonna speed up this process because it took a bunch of time, but as you can see, it's taking away the deep char that I had on the surface and leaving behind a really nice deep brown color. And I think this will suit the sewing machine really, really well. I've noticed some slight mistakes in the wood after the burning process. 
actually the flames have probably dried out some of the branches or at least the places where the branches were on this piece of wood and this left some small cracks and crevices within the grain of the wood. So for that reason I'm gonna have to go back with the epoxy and clean these up. But first let's sand the other side down too. Easy as that, done. Now let's fill all these little holes with some epoxy mixed with this charred sawdust. I was using a pretty cheap epoxy so it really took a long time to dry and didn't scrape off that easily. So initially I used a chisel but after that I switched to some sandpaper and these took a long time to buff out. You know, I take my work seriously but I can't help but think how much better I could be with some practice. So I know my channel is called One Try Only but this definitely needs more than one try to get perfect at. But still, this is why I made this YouTube channel, to try to get the best result on the first try. I've watched many of Blacktail Studios videos and it doesn't seem that complex, but when you get down to it, it really is. Here you can see me prepping everything for the finish. I'm going to be using a very clear and very soft shine lacquer to cover the whole piece. And I'm going to be painting a layer on and then sanding it down because it kind of raises the grain on the first paint and then paint it again and once more. So three coats in total and sanding with 1200 grit sandpaper in between layers. I hope that this will result in a nice soft shine and a very smooth finish because that's the aesthetic that I'm going for. And on the sides I've decided that I want to have them colored in black because the charring process really made my corrections pop and that is not a good thing since they look really white compared to the burnt dark wood. But first I'm gonna get two layers on each side and then finally seal the entire table in one piece after painting the edges black. This is probably the first serious woodworking project that I've done concerning a large slab of wood like this. I haven't really touched any of these projects because these large slabs of wood cost a lot of money and I can't afford just yet to invest in a serious woodworking shop and serious tools and also some seriously good lumber. So I got this piece of wood for free from a company that I used to work for which moved uh, places and they found this huge slab of wood in the attic and it has been probably there for more than 12 years. This means that I'm mitigating the risk of financial detriment by working on a free piece of wood. But it also means that I didn't select this piece and all the problems that arose probably could have been mitigated with some better wood selection. Unfortunately, there is one small issue. I can't finish this project yet because the fire has bent the wood in the center by about three millimeters. So I'm gonna need to fix this. And for that, I'm gonna use some structural steel bars. Yep, you heard it right. One more mistake. Oh man, I'm really wishing to be done with this project now, but it was fun up till now. So let's try to do a good job with these steel bars. This is some pretty high strength structural steel that I found uh, somewhere lying around. So I'm going to use it. First, I'm gonna cut off two sections, which are approximately 10 centimeters shorter than the width of the wood. But they look rusted, so let's fix that. Boom, there you go nice and shiny. Now I need to add a coat of paint and then drill some holes so I can attach it to my table. I hope that these pieces are rigid enough so that they can bend my table back into shape and I also hope that my table won't crack under the internal pressure of the bending. 
Anyways, it's just another Monday and it's time to learn something new about wood bending. These steel bars serve a double purpose. First of all, they correct the bend in the wood and also they will provide some additional support for the sewing machine table. I really don't want to mess up the paint job that I did on the sewing machine and I don't want to drill any extra holes on the sewing machine table. So I want to have some additional support and these will serve me just right. These bars will support the sewing machine table from the sides and hopefully this will mean that the table won't be as easy to slide down from the top of the sewing machine legs. And after about two and a half weeks of work, it's finally finished. Now, let's see how it will look on my sewing machine's legs. I want this to be proportional, looking professional, and also being a nice and rustic aesthetic. Anyways, let me know what you think. This project seriously challenged me and I could have given up at any point, but thankfully I didn't and now I have a pretty nice table. I wish to improve my woodworking skills so that I can actually make this a craft and not just a hobby. So if you are interested in watching me improve, please hit that subscribe button. With that said, here's the finished table. So that's it, the table is finished. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel as I have a lot more projects coming up. But for now, that's it. See you guys, bye bye.